Hello, welcome back to the Django Beat channel. My name's Stuart Gortner. I'm here to be talking about um, uh, gypsy picking today. Um, and as it's quite a large subject, I'm going to probably do it in a couple of different videos um, to lead you in. Now, um, this is about the mechanics of it. And as such, um, uh, one thing that's talked about is the idea that there are rules to gypsy picking. There certainly are characteristics that distinguish it from, say, the type of picking that a guitar player would learn if they were to go to Berklee School of Music in New York. Um, there they would teach them about the alternate picking. You always alternate up, down, up, down, up, down. Whereas in, in gypsy jazz, quite often there are lots of downstrokes in succession, um, particularly when changing strings. Now, um, there are things that distinguish it. One of them is the use of the rest stroke. Now, one of the rules, as they say, of gypsy picking is that downstrokes are always rest strokes. Okay? Um, unless perhaps you're doing artificial harmonics or something like that in a solo, perhaps. Okay, so downstrokes um, are always rest strokes. A rest stroke, if you don't know, is where you literally, I'm going to say I'm going to play the note G, the open G. You'll hear it ring. But my plectrum is going to go straight through there and it's going to rest on the B below. It makes it louder um, and also in a way you're more sort of um, certain that you're not going to you're less likely to hit the B itself or accidentally rub against it and, 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 and make a mistake which is why my hand as you might have noticed is actually further away from the strings than perhaps if you had learned at Berkeley or if you'd learned to play as a, a rock player or something else you will have had your hand like this and your most of your movement will probably come from your thumb and your wrist like this in order to actually access different strings. And in gypsy jazz, that's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to move your hand away. Some people sort of lock their wrist in position like this to get a good action. Um, I would advise against that to like this because uh, it will give you RSI. Um, that obviously, like I said, is not gonna, gonna help very much. That's going to reduce your volume level and make it harder to get to different strings. You want to want to bend it a little bit like that, about 45 degree angle, and keep your hand as away. Okay? As you can see it's coming from it's coming from the wrist. From the wrist. Sometimes the arm is even used. I mean when you're playing la pompe when you're playing the rhythm it is. Okay, so I'm going to give you a, an exercise to get used to using down, uh, resting downstrokes because that's uh, where the bread and butter of your sound is going to come from. It makes it distinguishable from other sounds of guitar. I'm going to give you a left hand exercise, a finger independence exercise, which also employs the downstrokes, uh, the resting downstroke. This is how it goes. <laughs> I'm not going to do that now, but I will repeat. As you see, I'm going up four frets at a time. So the way it works, okay? I don't need to write this down. Four frets, one for each finger, yeah? If it's easier, then these are wide frets. These frets are very wide and it will cause you to, to span out. If you want, it might be a bit easier here to start out. The idea simply is to move each finger at a time, not to do, you'll see people, people, people playing like that, where the, the, the little fingers moving around a hell of a lot, it's best to try to minimise that and this exercise is designed to help. It's good to keep your fingers on your points. So when I get to here, I, I only move my index finger across. Once it is set on the fretboard, I then move the middle finger. Once that is set, I then move that one. I don't move them until the next one is set. And on the way back, you reverse the action with the left hand. And then move up a fret. Now what I do is I go from, from one up to, up to 12. 
So up here, where it is difficult to do, and I come back down. A full exercise will take me from 1 to 12 and back again. By that time, your arms should be pretty tired. Um, but if you do it every day, it really will definitely um, familiarise your wrist and muscle memory with the idea of producing a rest stroke each time. Um, also, it will help your finger independence and the strength in your hand and the flexibility of your hand. Um, okay, rule two will be the next video. That's it for me today. And I hope that helps. Uh, click subscribe and maybe click an ad for me. You know, it's like a donation, but it doesn't affect your balance, your bank balance. Um, and I hope we speak soon. Okay, bye bye.